Hey guys, this video is going to be a very important one. It pertains to a lot of dodgy things that have been happening recently uh, within competitive Gwent uh, and even previously, you know, in previous seasons, um, you know, on the pro ladder. And if you have the time, I do recommend watching through the whole thing as there's a lot of stuff, a lot of important stuff that I'm going to talk about uh, and hopefully uh, you, you get to see a lot of the evidence that I have here um, that will help you think about the situation in a, a new light. Uh, if you haven't already been caught up to speed on it, um, then I'm here to do that for you today. Uh, I do have a script here, which is a bit different for me, but I want to make sure that I can be as factual and ob objective as I can possibly be. And I'm going to try to stick to the script, not, you know, let emotions or uh, pure conjecture get in the way of this um, this video and the topic. Uh, now, a little bit of a disclaimer, Game King is in this video, uh, in this story, I should say, and I am friends with him, so... There's likely to be a little bit of bias on my side towards him. I do, you know, favor him probably since we are good friends. So let me help you understand the situation for the last season of Pro Ladder, season 12, um, as it will help th put things into context on why this season is important and why the things that happened are important. So Game King and Pro Neo are in a race effectively for who can have more crown points, with the person who has the most. Uh, getting a guaranteed spot at the $250,000 World Masters Tournament that will be happening later. Uh, the No one else apart from those two people is able to qualify, uh, apart from, of course, people at the Challenger who can qualify through the Challenger to World Masters. No one else can qualify apart from these guys through the ladder system. Whoever comes second in crown points out of those guys uh, will still have a chance to get into World Masters, but it will depend on how people do in the upcoming Challenger. So effectively, whoever gets first in Season 12 is guaranteed a spot at World Masters. That's the important thing. They, they get a guaranteed spot at a very high, uh, you know, money tournament. So during this season, Game King has so far had an insanely high win rate, something around 70%, um, if I'm guessing. And as a result, he's climbed to a very high MMR, as you can see here, uh, 10,605. This score was higher than the amount he got last season at the very end of that season. Um, and he's, he's right now on peak with four factions, with every faction that he needs to climb with, as you can see through the screenshot here. And that means, basically, if you're not a pro ladder guy, um, it means he can much easily, much more easily climb his, you know, total MMR because he's already on peak. It means when he wins a game, his MMR will increase. He doesn't have to climb up to the peak and then win games after that to raise his MMR. Just for a little bit of explanation for people who don't play pro ladder. Um... So, Pronio has played a lot more games, uh, and he has a low win rate, but he's still managed to climb to a very good score, and this is what hit where his score is at. So he has 10,510, you know, about 100 MMR behind Game King. How much is, you know, is the MMR worth? Well, effectively, at the high ranks, you're getting maybe 6 or 5 MMR, you know, after you're, get, you know, after you're past 2,600 MMR. Um, you're getting about five or six per win, so 100 points, you're looking at, you know, something like 20 wins or whatever to get that much MMR, if you're already on peak. So, um, these were roughly the scores and the amount of games played by each player on Monday evening, so this is about, you know, 35-ish hours um, before the end of the season, which happened on 10 a.m. Wednesday. So they've got, you know, a day and a half to continue climbing, um, Worthy of note is that Proneo, unlike Game King, is only on peak with one faction, so he actually has to climb with all of his other three up to his highest score and go beyond that to actually raise his total MMR. So it's quite a big ask. So the last 36 hours of the season play out, uh, and I mean, we can see the, the, the end scores here. Uh, the, yeah, Game King climbs a further 53 MMR across his four peak factions. 53 MMR and he gets the final score of 10,668. Uh, Pronia also climbs, it's worth noting this is the highest score that was ever achieved um, in any homecoming season so far, so keep that in mind if you want, <laughs> you don't have to. Um, so Pronia also climbs and he raises his score uh, by his MMR by a total of 162, um, so you know 100 effectively MMR more than Game King raised his score by. Um, and that leaves him four MMR, or one game, effectively, ahead of Game King. Um, and when you take into account the, as I, you know, showed you before, the, um, the lack of peaks that Pronio had before, uh, 
you know, adding that to the total MMR he would have had to gain, um, he gained a total of 331 MMR, so 162 that he climbed on peak and 169 that he climbed off peak. So 331 MMR was gained compared to Game King's 53 MMR. Now, suspicions were obviously raised here as Pronier was able to effectively climb six times as much as Game King during this final period. Now, obviously, it would have been a bit easier for Pronier to climb because his scores would have been lower at the start, but still, six times as much effectively of a climb. Uh, and no one has ever done a climb of this magnitude, really, uh, ever. Uh, it is a little bit crazy of a thing to happen. Um, if you're interested in other numbers, the final climb, Game King played 66 games. He averaged one game per 30 minutes. Pronier played 193. He averaged one game per 10 minutes. Um, so he's effectively playing three times as much as Game King. Now, obviously, this isn't proof of win trading. Uh, far from it. I mean, it's not even proof of any kind of uh, lack of fair play. Obviously, Pronier could just be a robot played through that time, um, you know, game, 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 won a lot of them, very possible, um, but it's just highlighting the difference between the two climbs that Game King and Pronio experience. I find that quite interesting uh, to talk about. Now, typically players aiming to climb higher in the final week of the season will at some point hit a wall and they'll be unable to raise their scores. I've experienced this. It becomes a lot harder to climb the higher your MMR. You know, if you're over 2,600, for example, you're getting a lot less for each win and you're losing a lot more for every loss. So effectively, that you know, not hitting that wall and going beyond that wall and beyond it and beyond it is is not a common thing to happen, but, you know, it, it is possible. Um, so the point the point I'm trying to make is, uh, you know, his climb was unprecedented, Pronier's climb. Uh, Game King's less so, but it was still impressive. Um, but Pronier's climb, yeah, six times effectively greater than uh, Game King's. He did play more, um, but that did raise suspicions of him maybe cheating in some way you know, due to that $250,000 qualification on the line. Now, it's worth noting that even one win trade, one single game out of 193 being won, that was that should have been a loss. If only one of those games is, an, in fact, a win due to win trading or other forms of cheating, then you get an effective MMR gain of roughly 15 MMR most of the time. So that is obviously more than enough to make up this difference. So effectively, if Pronier had win traded one out of 193 games, then his result of beating Game King would have been null and void. Um, that is worth pointing out. And of course, the more win trades, the more MMR you can gain. So it's not, you know, inconceivable that the large amount of MMR gains could have been due to win trading in some form. You know, whether it's one, two, three win trades on normally lost games, that could represent 30, 40 potentially MMR. Uh, which obviously could account for the very large jumps that Pronier was able to do in the short amount of time that he did it. Uh, now, yeah, this isn't like true evidence of anything really, it just shows how crazy of a climb Pronier was actually able to do, something that's never been done before, but you know, in theory is possible. Uh, but interestingly, we have, that's kind of the weakest evidence against him, honestly, uh, out of everything that I have here. So probably the smoking gun for this whole situation uh, the thing that really kick-started it is this video, um, which I'll, I will play to you guys now in its entirety, and I'll explain it after. Надо бафить. Не, 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 стой. Двойку, двойку. Да зачем двойку? Потому что не умеешь. Да я думаю, догонит. Ну, если кенсель пустой... Плюс один еще. Но у него семь, восемь, девять. У него там миллиард поинтов. Он догонит. А что у него у вас хода? А, Я думаю, там остался туда. меч, и он хочет сейчас ее добить, чтобы дать меч. Ему, наверное, хенсель не зашел. Не хотел. Димон, нажми случайно на консит. <laughs> Случайно, ну, ну просто да, не да, я, я тоже так думаю, честно говоря. Не склик, Димон, под пивком. So, um, yeah, that is the, uh, the the most conclusive evidence we have in this case, and I'll explain what's going on here. So, obviously. Uh, Two Russian players playing, one is House of Cards, he is the friend of Pro Neo. I will provide evidence to support that claim uh, in a few minutes here. 
He's clearly playing against Pro Neo. Uh, he is up by 13 points. The entire game of this was streamed, so we actually know that Pro Neo does not have the you know enough points to win here. Instead, he ropes, he emotes. Uh, the person playing with House of Cards, whose name I don't actually know, um, unfortunately, uh, they tell him not to buff the guys. Of course, if you buff, you're going to get more points, and then it's going to look suspicious if you then forfeit to him, you know. And then he also says, yeah, forfeit, make it look like a misclick, make it look like an accident. Um, so very clear that collusion is happening here, um, and that these guys, at the very least, are conspiring in some way to give Pro Neo a win that he didn't justly deserve. Um, now, as a result of this, of course, uh, House of Cards was banned for win trading. Um, so that lets you understand where CDPR, are, uh, what their stance on this is. They agree that this was obviously win trading uh, and not acceptable. And now, yeah, we can get into a little bit of extra evidence on why I, you know, why House of Cards is linked to Pro Neo, why they are friends and not simply strangers, as people have claimed. Um, they are linked in in a in an in a way that cannot be disputed. So, what is the evidence that I have for that? Well, I'll show you right now. So, in Pro Neo's stream that he did, uh, you know, disputing and trying to prove his innocence, he did show his Discord, and obviously him and House of Cards have been talking very recently. Um, so, yeah, there's evidence of them being friends. What's more, uh, and this is maybe even, even a worse thing, um, but we can show that uh, here is House of Cards playing on his second account after being banned. He streamed this. <laughs> I don't know why, but he streamed this and he's playing on the account Mushi. Now, uh, Pro Neo conveniently also showed his, uh, he also showed his match history, which show him playing a friendly match. In fact, three friendly matches against Mushi. So we know that Pro Neo, and this is, by the way, very close to the final climb. So um, this is slightly before that, I believe. Um, of that 36 hour period. So what we know from these screenshots is quite clearly that uh, House of Cards is good friends with Pro Neo, they play games together, they talk to each other on Discord, uh, and yeah, I mean, even you could say that uh, Mushi, House of Cards, second account might be a little bit questionable, but whatever, we're not going to talk about that here. Uh, but the real point is these guys are definitely linked. The claim that Mushi, uh, House of Cards was not in any way trying to help Pro Neo, or that Pro Neo wasn't, you know, thankful for that win is 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 pretty crazy. And the fact that House of Cards was banned for this, this is my opinion. Uh, rather than Pro Neo, who is the one benefiting from the win trading, I think they both should have been banned personally because, well, here's the evidence that they're obviously good friends and that collusion is happening to try to boost Pro Neo. Um, personally, I think it's wrong that uh, they were both not banned for that. But okay, guys, we have even more evidence, and I'll get on to that. Um, so all of this stuff, the uh, the wind trading, the video of that happening, there's me waking up in eight and a half hours. Uh, this all happened during the important season that we're talking about here, season 12, where Game King and Peronia were vying for first place. Game King saw this video, he was actually the one that reported it, and House of Cards did get banned, as I already said. Uh, and Game King was worried that Pronier would potentially be getting more free wins throughout the season and maybe then overtake him. Remember, Game King was far ahead earlier in the season uh, over Pronier, so he was worried that Pronier would overtake him by gaining free wins that he didn't deserve, like this one. Uh, which, obviously, that example, that game, could represent a 15 or more MMR gain for Pro Neo, effectively, uh, as he was able to substitute a win for a loss due to win trading. So. Game King and other players decided to monitor the length of Pronia's games and see if anything suspicious would happen during the final push. Uh, and Game King, during the time he was awake with the help of other players, they found at least seven suspicious games which ended before you would expect a game of Gwent to end. And these ranged from one to four minute games, with one of them being explained to be a random forfeit to Pronio by Paldi. The other ones have not been explained. Apart from one more, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, unfortunately, as of this time, CDPR has not given information to anyone on the number of short and suspicious games that Pro Neo played during these final hours, uh, and they are the only ones that know this other than Pro Neo himself. Uh, they're the only ones who have that information, so hopefully they'll be able to share that at some point. I don't know when they're going to do that, but maybe at, at some point they will. Ask any pro player, including myself, and they will tell you that receiving that many early forfeits during a final climb, i.e. seven at least, uh, during the final climb is extremely unusual or simply has never happened to them, probably the latter. 
Additionally, the fact that these guys were so oblivious to the rules as to stream this win trading suggests that they don't expect punishment as a result. Pro Neo has been safe from punishment so far, so maybe they weren't wrong about that. Uh, and it just, I think, speaks to the prevalence of these kind of, these kind of, uh, you know, issues on the pro ladder. Now, what you might find really interesting to know uh, is that one of the suspicious game length wins that Pro Neo got, one of the games, you know, gifted to him effectively, was a game that resulted in Pro Neo overtaking Game King's MMR. So he actually went above Game King and MMR. This was before they got to these scores, but it was, you know, it got him ahead at some point. Um, and what's even more interesting is that uh, this game was forfeited to Pro Neo by a Ukrainian player, fellow Ukrainian player called Nick R. Um, and there's a lot of stuff going on here. So when Nick R was asked about, you know, his forfeit, um, I have evidence to show this. Uh, he said he didn't want to play against Artifact Degeneracy from Pro Neo, and that's why he forfeited. Uh, and this is despite Pro Neo not even playing an Artifact Heavy Harold deck during the final week of Pro Ladder, as you can see from the gameplay he posted on his channel, and as I've been told uh, by players who faced him in the final days. So um, that was the excuse that Nick R gave for his forfeit. I didn't have the slightest desire to play against Neo's dirty deck of artifacts. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Interesting. What's more, Nick R was well aware of the importance of this season for Pro Neo and Game King. He also told Game King that it's fine that Pro Neo got number one. He would still have a chance to qualify anyway. Information that only someone very interested in this situation would have knowledge of, and I have, of course, evidence of that happening. So, uh, you're a really strong player. Sorry if you decided that I somehow helped Neo. I would still lose this game. I've played, yep, okay. Um, and there was discussion there that Game King would still qualify. So clearly he knows about the situation. He also, you know, said that the artifact deck that Neo wasn't playing was the reason that he decided to forfeit. And now what's very, very interesting further is that in the video that Nikar posted on YouTube, his ex explanation for why he forfeited actually changes, and it becomes uh, he wanted to forfeit to gain fast MMR during the last bit of the season. He didn't think he would win, and so he wanted to get as much MMR as possible, and that's why he forfeited. Um, now, this is actually, seems to be a lie, because uh, Nick R proceeded to then queue into Game King with a counter matchup, which was his Northern Realm deck versus Game King's monster deck. And if you look on, if you look on his uh, scores, uh, he was actually 80 MMR off peak on Henselt uh, when he did this. So uh, Nick R says he, uh, he was wanting to gain fast MMR, that's why he conceded to Pro Neo. Right after that, he switched to a faction which he was 80 MMR off of on, so that doesn't really make sense. He wouldn't have been able to climb any MMR on that faction. This was during the last, the very last couple of hours, even the last hour of the pro ladder, you know, going on. So there wasn't enough time for him to gain MMR on Northern Realms, but he still argues that that's why he uh, conceded to Pro Neo. Clearly he's telling lies, and I think with all the other information surrounding this, okay, this forfeit happened and it pushed Neo into first place. Uh, this guy's also Ukrainian, uh, along with Neo. A little bit of a coincidence. There aren't that many, you know, high-ranked uh, and playing at the end of the season, you know, um, Ukrainian players. And of course, these testimonies that don't add up and, you know, seem to just be straight-up lights. So, we've talked about all that. Now I'd just like to quickly address the reactions of Pro Neo and his community to the accusations that were leveled against him. So, Pro Neo streamed some gameplay uh, from, I believe it was Monday. Uh, so this is a couple of days before the final climb. Um, and in fact, it was this, yeah, it would have been this, the same day that it started, but you know, this was, you know, the very early stages of that, or even before that, you know, it's Monday evening when the final climb that I've designated it as that uh, began. So the point is there's a very large section of time, which is obviously unaccounted for. And it also begs the interesting question, why did Pro Neo randomly record a two hour section of gameplay? Um, maybe to show as a kind of smoke screen if people dis you know, decided to catch on to his win trading ideas. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the answer to that but uh, it's a possibility. So the gameplay he shows doesn't prove anything in any way. He doesn't show any of the, you know, surprising or suspicious results, the quick games, the forfeits. Uh, it only shows standard gameplay, which of course you would expect. Uh, and he also showed his match history, which again doesn't really do anything to prove his innocence because there's no 
judgment of how long those games were within the match history. They could be forfeits very easily. They could still be games that were win traded to him, you know, whether it's a win or a loss. Um, you know, wins could easily still be a win trade. So showing the match history didn't really do anything to, to prove his innocence either. So the arguments that Pro Neo and his his uh, you know supporters have given in defense of him have not really been good enough, uh, I would argue. And additionally, he seemed to attempt to muddy the waters by accusing Game King of cheating in several ways. Uh, he accused him of having win traded, queue sniping, and you know manipulating matchmaking, which were of course unfounded and unevidenced in any way. Uh, simply going off of screenshots of their conversation and trying to apply that to, uh, you know, therefore Game King must have done this. Not really uh, evidence in any way. And uh, yeah. So additionally, many from the community supporting Pro Neo begun to claim that the whole ordeal was some kind of battle between the CIS regions and Europe. They claim that European players such as Alessio and even myself have win traded with Game King and that we're racist against Russians and Ukrainian players. And uh, yeah, as I said before in this video, I'm trying to be as objective as I possibly can be. I harbor no ill will whatsoever towards you know any person of any you know who's of any particular ethnicity or nation or race or whatever i'm not a racist dude i promise you um all i'm interested in is the idea of fair play the truth i'm just trying to find that and you know providing evidence to support that and yeah now my stream that i did was a little bit you know hot-headed and they often are because i don't properly sit down and think through everything i'm gonna say it's all off the cuff it's my emotions it's my opinions so, you know, of course, you're going to get some stuff uh, that is maybe less savoury on there compared to in a video like this, but that's just the way it is, I'm afraid. Uh, so, additionally, Europe doesn't actually consider itself a collective of players unlike some other regions do, it seems. Uh, there's no group mentality from which, you know, European players justify win trading or other cheating practices. Um, now, I'm going to speak from personal opinion here. I think that the claims of regions trying, you know, in this battle with one another, um, I think that just speaks to a mentality in Pronia's community of this kind of, they're the underdog, they're battling against Europe. If that is the case, then I can quite easily understand that with that mindset, you know, it wouldn't be unreasonable to be willing to win trade or help someone from your community to get to the high ranks and get into tournaments and whatnot. So um, it's possible that this mentality is in part an explanation of why people like Pronio are able to do this, um, it would seem. So also worth noting here that, of course, the language barrier is really annoying to deal with. I can't properly address every claim or accusation or, you know, uh, thing that is said about me or other people uh, in these videos because I don't speak the language, unfortunately. But hopefully I've addressed the big points there. Uh, and we can move on to some other stuff. So let's do some quick recap of everything right now. Uh, and hopefully this will paint a bit of a picture of uh, why people are saying Pro Neo is a cheater, the evidence against him. And of course, we've now discussed that there isn't really much to prove his innocence out there on the internet, unfortunately, right now. So let's recap everything. Pro Neo and Game King, they're in a race. They need to qualify for a $250,000 tournament. First of its kind, biggest tournament in the history of Gwent. Many pro players have been suspicious of Prony in the past, which uh, is definitely a thing, and of course of other players, which I'm not going to get into in this video, and probably never, but uh, what you need to know, suspicion has been there for a long time uh, for Prony and other players. Uh, Prony is seen on stream being gifted a win in the important season by one of his close Gwent friends. He then climbs an unprecedented amount of MMR in a short amount of time he places higher than game king by one game's worth of mmr the one game which put him over the edge to be ahead of game king was suspiciously forfeited to him by a fellow ukrainian player whose testimony on why he forfeited is full of lies and incongruencies and there are many more instances of strange and suspicious forfeits given to pro neo during his final climb which cdpr has information on but hasn't released so clearly the argument that Pro Neo has undeservedly gained rank 1 is in no way unfounded. I am as certain as it is possible to be that Pro Neo's climb was not achieved entirely legitimately. I believe collusion between several players occurred in order to boost Pro Neo to World Masters. Almost all of the professional players I've spoken to agree on this, and I find this amount of evidence very difficult to argue against, particularly when the arguments given by Pro Neo and others do not absolve him of guilt uh, in any way, shape or form. Let's quickly talk about a solution. So clearly Pronia was the one benefiting from this collusion as he is the one that gets a spot at World Masters. 
Uh, I would guess he is in some way complicit with this, obviously, because he has a hell of a lot to gain from, you know, participating and qualifying for this tournament. But we can't prove that he is complicit in these win trading, you know, events that have happened. Nevertheless, it's undeni undeniable he has received wins that he shouldn't have, so the most obvious solution in my mind is to deduct MMR from both him and Game King for every suspicious early forfeit. Uh, simply, you know, go through their match history, find every game less than a minute long, get rid of the MMR associated, the MMR gain associated with that. Unfortunately, CDPR is not willing to do this. I don't know why, but I will dive into some of the thoughts I have on why they may be reluctant to take any kind of punitive measure against ProNeo. So yeah, I'm going to try to explain their win, their stance on win trading, and give some opinions why they might not be doing the obvious and right thing here. So in the past, several instances of win trading or unfair MMR gains have been believed to have occurred on Pro Ladder, not counting Join Time and House of Cards, who literally streamed their win trading. Uh, CDPR has never acted on accusations supported by even the strongest of evidence with punitive measures or by reducing unfairly gained MMR. Uh, I will not be going into detail, of course, on all of the cases of win trading. There are quite a lot of them, um, but we won't be getting into them here. They're all in the past now, and there's no solution to easily retroactively punish those players. However, it's worth noting that very similar cases to Pronius have occurred before, and despite much evidence being provided and given to CDPR, nothing was done. Uh, I would like to address the response CDPR would like to give to this. So, most likely they will say they can't possibly know the intent in most cases. Uh, you know, you can't technically prove that Pronio intended for his friends and colleagues and whatnot to uh, forfeit to him, uh, and therefore they cannot find him guilty. Uh, but it's worth noting, uh, in fact, that this logic doesn't really apply to things like the uh, the bans that are given to people for bug abuse, right? If you abuse a bug, CDPR cannot technically know that you're intending to abuse the bug. Um, they can only go off of strong evidence that you're doing that. Uh, and yes, it's obvious that someone who abuses the traveling merchant bug is cheating, right? It's very obvious. In the same way, it's very obvious that collusion is happening on the pro ladder with pro neo and other individuals very obvious that is happening very obvious pro neo is involved and very very likely he is complicit in that yet cdpr are not willing to uh, do anything about it now it's also worth mentioning that pro neo has actually been reported for abusing bugs in the past uh, even this season he actually abused the rope rope bug against saber um, and as uh, as of yet i mean this was reported a few weeks ago cdpr has not done anything about that so uh, Prony is known to be a, a bug abuser already, uh, is, isn't much of a stretch to, you know, implicate him in other forms of cheating, such as this collusion, which we have a lot of evidence for. So we've already established that people have been banned for abusing the rules despite not knowing their precise intent, you know, CDPR not knowing this, or involvement in cheating. When, it, when you're talking about bug abuse. Um, but what's more, CDPR's policy does allow them to ban individuals from competition or the game itself for any reason they choose. Uh, so the idea that they need 100% certainty, certainty is ridiculous. Uh, in the court of law, even, individuals are prosecuted based on the evidence levied against them. They're not based on whether they're 100% guilty. It's simply how much evidence supports the claim that this person is guilty how much goes against it in this case i would argue there's so much evidence that they are guilt that pro Neo is guilty in this case and so little evidence that he isn't that it would be enough to convict him guilty of doing this thing but even if there's only 99 percent of you know certainty of a crime being committed that's almost always in real life enough to convict a person of you know doing that crime it's all about how much evidence there is is there enough to you know convict the person. So unfortunately CDPR isn't applying this logic and the consequence of that is that uh, cheating on the pro ladder is encouraged and particularly for individuals like pro neo who've already gotten away with it because there's never really a punishment given uh, or the punishment is you know quite light in the case of some individuals who have been punished for win trading uh, despite accusations, evidence, everything lining up and pointing to the person being guilty nothing has been done. Uh, and there, there could be quite a few reasons why CDPR are reluctant to punish people on, in this front. And, you know, I don't want to say any of these for sure is true. I don't know. I'm just, uh, you know, giving suggestions as to why they might not want to punish people because it's probably a reason, right? Um, so firstly, it could be that they want to keep certain regions interested in the game and competition. And so 
by not punishing players who are cornerstones of a certain community like pro neo in the kind of russian ukrainian community uh they you know cdpr maybe think that more people will be interested in gwent uh, another alternative reason could be they don't want to receive the backlash that would come from you know punishing these very popular players um, another reason could be that they don't want to condemn a player like pro neo who's been around since the very beginning of competitive gwent he was in the first challenger uh, if you remember uh, so that would bring a big question mark over the validity and the integrity of esports throughout the whole season one of gwent masters so maybe that could be the reason the final reason could be that individual corruption or personal biases or interests are at play within cdpr uh, i personally wouldn't level this accusation against them because you know i respect them as a company i respect the individuals within the company and i don't think they would cross this line uh, but you know it's it's a possible thing uh, so this leads me to the point of this video, really. Uh, it just seems to me that CDPR wants to move on to Season 2 without really doing anything about this controversial situation. Uh, and this has been helped, you know, they've been helped in that uh, by the muddying of water done by Pro Neo and his supporters. So simply improving Season 2 of Gwent Masters without taking action against the cheaters in this case will produce the least backlash, I think, in CDPR's mind. I think what CDPR believe is that just letting this all go by and going to season two and improving upon the systems for next time will uh, produce the least backlash and the best result. Um, but, you know, myself, many others, uh, we have a strong draw to fairness and integrity of competition and justice. And to see cheaters being rewarded rather than punished after they've so blatantly and without even worrying about the potential for them to be caught, uh, breaking the rules and abusing the rules and cheating in various ways, uh, it's truly a disgrace for us to see that. Uh, and this is a message to CD Power themselves. We're simply observing and pointing out the obvious disregard and abuse of the rules so that you may take action and remove cheaters from your game in order to maintain its competitive integrity. This whole drama, this video, it's not a witch hunt on Pro Neo. It's not, you know, born of hate for any particular type of person or racism in any way. We simply just want justice and a fair system. And by not banning this kind of behavior or not punishing or even not even implementing any kind of solution to the situation, you're incentivizing people to skirt the rules in the future as they can easily escape the ban or the punishment that should be coming their way. Now, I think it's worth, again, emphasizing the solution to the problem. So CDPR, for whatever reason, they don't want to punish Pro Neo with a ban, with a tournament, you know, uh, stopping him from going to tournaments or whatever. Uh, so what could they do instead? Well, they could take the games, the number of games that were less than a minute long, for example, that were suspicious and obviously not representative of a truly one game of Gwent, one that you played better than your opponent, you had more points at the end of the game, right? They could take those games, add them up, take away the MMR gained from those, from both Pro Neo and Game King. I think that would be a fair way to do things. Alternatively, you could even deduct the MMR that was gained by Pro Neo from the recorded win trading that happened, or the admitted early forfeit from Nick R that happened. So, in any of those ways, a more fair solution would, you know, be, be brought about than what we have right now, uh, which is no, nothing at all. A lack of justice, a lack of fairness, and really... Uh, yeah, not not good stuff. And at the very least, if they can't even do this, at the very least, they should, they really should release the kind of amount of flagged or suspicious games that each player have, you know, participated in, just so that we can get more of an idea of the situation. We can maybe uh, understand a bit better how many kind of games could have been win traded or not, uh, really to what extent this was going on and all that good stuff, and whether one player is more guilty than another, which. We already kind of know to be the case, but would help to always have more information there. Uh, obviously, it's difficult to do anything about the previous case of win trading, which have happened in the past, because you can't really retroactively punish people. Um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, personally, I think Pronio should be banned, as I said already. Um, he has clearly violated the rules as stacks and stacks of evidence that collusion has been going on between him and many players. Uh, and the fact that he will be allowed to compete in the the biggest Gwent tournament to date is to me it seems like a real disgrace. I I, I like to think that uh, Gwent's integrity of competition and the uh, the great players that will be at World Masters. I would like to think they wouldn't have to you know share a tournament, the biggest tournament with uh, known effectively 
uh, cheater. So, honestly, I don't think CD Power will, will do anything uh, about this situation, judging from their track record on previous accusations of win trading. Um, but that's partly why I'm making this video, to bring a bit of public awareness to the situation uh, and to give you guys all the actual evidence uh, you know, with screenshots, with video evidence that, of course, ProNew has been involved in collusion and cheating on on ProLadder. Yeah, about CDPR doing anything, hopefully I'm proven wrong. They maybe, maybe will do something in the coming days. It's possible. I hope they do. Uh, they do have a way to fix this situation. They have many solutions they could pull out. Um, but this video really needed to be made, and I'm glad I made it. Hopefully I was quite uh, objective and didn't let my bias or my emotions really cloud this video. But, uh, you know, you can be the judge of that, I suppose. But thanks a lot for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time.